Hello everyone, Kyle here bringing you yet another video that reminds me of why I need to stop going to art galleries and pretending I'm part of the exhibit. Today we're going to play some Planet Zoo. Yay! Finally, a game that lets me imprison something other than people. Build a world for wildlife and Planet Zoo. Construct detailed habitats, manage your zoo, and meet authentic living animals who think, feel, and explore the world you create around them. <laughs> well, I don't like to brag or anything, but but this really won't be difficult for me. I made my cat an underground Yo. house a few years ago and he loves it so much that I haven't seen him since. You start your journey by customizing an avatar that you have no control over in the game and will forget even exists within your first five minutes of play. You then select your game mode. Options include career, timed and just a sandbox. Being someone who fails at every career they try and feels enough pressure from time just by being alive will go with the sandbox box mode. Next we can either select a biome and continent from the list or just click somewhere on the map where we'd like to build. <laughs> we all know that we like the challenge of building in Earth's most inhospitable place. So hello Australia my old friend. So this is the wasteland that is known as Australia and despite its harsh look and blistering heat it still has more life inside of it than I do. The real interesting thing to note about this particular location is it was a real Really stupid idea to open a zoo here in the middle of nowhere. Are we sure we're even going to get visitors? I suppose I could hire a bunch of people to work for me and then fire them so they technically would be visitors at that point. Uh, but we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Firstly, let's build a barrier using this thick glass. I like the idea of people being able to see the animals. Nothing annoys me more than going to a zoo and looking at seemingly empty enclosures. Well, there is one thing that annoys me more. It's being told that I'm not even looking in an enclosure and I need to leave the men's toilets immediately. There we go. Next we need a gate to let staff access it. Perfect. I think we also need a power source for the type of gate we've picked. So let's add a solar panel, a wind turbine and a generator just to cover all our power making needs. We'll just link them all using an exclusive employee only path. Next we can extend the height of the enclosure to make sure whatever creature we have inside can't just park or out of it. Now we'll add a path for for our little visitors to follow. Next, we need to decorate the entrance in such a fashion that people will remember their trip forever and not want to leave. How can we achieve all of that from just the entrance, I hear you asking? Well, let me explain. Using carefully planned science numbers, we will block the entrance in such a way that it will be difficult to enter, but not difficult enough to deter them from trying. As for the memories, well, we will put cacti among the trees and the scars they get from climbing through them will serve as gentle reminders. Anyway, I think it's time we staff this zoo. So we'll start by adding in the buildings they require to function, such as this break room. We could go fancy with the designs, themed even. But something about exposed asbestos insulation really says home to me. Next, we'll build a trade center, which is used to collect the animals you purchase, and a keeper's hut, which I guess is where they go to sleep while they're at work. Now we can just link it all up using the paths and add a solar panel for power. There we go. Beautiful. Now we'll just add a no feeding sign to fulfill every health and safety requirement a zoo could possibly have. I feel safe already knowing that animals won't be fed. Okay, it's time to do the paperwork. We can have the zoo open for 24 hours a day. The staff can't really go home anyway as the path isn't linked to the entrance and they refuse to walk on the grass. As for the ticket prices, I'm happy for the adults to pay $3 each. As for the children, hmm, we'll go with the maximum and hope that the parents can't afford the extortionate price. This way, we'll minimise the amount of children we have to deal with. Right, now we need to hire some staff. Caretakers are important as they have brooms, which look like they could be used for brushing. I think one keeper should be fine as we don't even have any animals yet. Mechanics, I'll grab a few of you so our place is always up and running like a well-oiled machine. As for security, I think one highly skilled officer to watch over the entrance will be more than enough. We can also put a vet on this side. They can just shout across the path advice. We'll add an educator too. I don't really know what they're for, but hopefully they'll teach people something useful. Oh, nice. I see the security, the vet and the educator are all heading towards the entrance. I guess they'll greet visitors as they arrive and make sure things are okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Really glad I hired you three. You are obviously an intelligent bunch. Hmm. Right. I think we might need more security 
authority. Maybe someone that doesn't share a single brain cell. Officers, please, for the love of God, make sure this place is safe for everyone. Oh, where are you going? Why are you walking into each other? What are you trying to achieve here? I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, if I add enough of you, then maybe one of you will know what you're doing and teach the others how to do their freaking job properly. Ah, oh, whatever. Just don't lead the visitors by example, okay? Let's add some heaters to the entrance to make it unbearably hot. This way, going outside won't be such a shock to the system. Just whack them all up to 50 degrees. Great. Next, I'll add a couple of scarecrows to do the job the security should be doing. <sighs> Let's see, what else do we need? Uh, okay, a waterfall. Yep, yeah, this waterfall will be a lovely addition. We can just add a few at the entrance to make things wet. Nothing says enjoy your day like being pissed on from above. And just to make sure you continue to stay wet throughout your visit, I'll add sprinklers along the path. Can't actually see the path, so I'll just guesstimate close enough. Just a few more. Great, that's the whole path looking damp. Okay, let's add a sign now to the front that stops guests from talking to the brain dead security. I'm worried that any talking may disturb them from whatever it is they're doing. Let's lose the scarecrows and put up a barrier instead. Oh, interesting. I've disturbed the balance. Why are you all moving to this side now? You're supposed to be guarding the front. Oh, whatever. You're as menacing as a school of fish, but you're my school of fish. So, we're still lacking animals. Let's focus on that aspect for a bit. I'd like to add some toys within the enclosure to make sure the animals don't get bored. We'll start with this tire. Oh, hold on. They are stackable and have physics. So what happens if I just... Uh, okay, interesting. This is, um... Yeah, this is more more or less what um, I had hoped would happen. An everlasting tire spawner. <laughs> I can't see any animals getting bored of this, can you? Speaking of which, let's just buy a few of each. So that's page one done. Ah, a storage. This makes sense. 200 animals maximum. We're going to need more caretakers, which oddly enough are the ones who transfer the animals to the enclosure for us. So we have nine of them. If we want to make the transfer in one go, we'll need around 200 of them. Let's get hiring. One, two, three. Ah, oh, hold on. You aren't broom people. You are, oh God, interfering vets. I'll tell you what, thanks for coming today, but you're all fired. <laughs> yeah, make your way to the entrance and leave my zoo at once. What do you mean you're stuck? Well, looks like you're going to be permanent residents then because I'm not freeing you. Anyway, caretakers, here we go. Oh, wait a minute. Did you just kick that tire while I'm holding you? What happens now if I... Whee! <laughs> oh, we have fun here. Oh, good. The tires are returning. I was worried that I would mess up the tire waterfall with Maid. Okay, let's get 200 of you little people then. There we go. That took next to no time at all. Thanks to editing. Next, I'd like to decorate a little more with this dead penguin that I found. He looks like he's been stabbed by the feeding sign now. And we'll put some cool effects around the tires to make it look like a tire volcano. Ooh. Now, I'll add some atmosphere speakers and set them to an underwater theme just to justify the need for the visitors to be getting sprayed by sprinklers. We'll add a few benches for the older visitors who want to find a nice quiet place to die. Nice! This is really starting to look like something as opposed to before when there was nothing. Let's finish getting the 200 animals now shall we? There we go. Fall. How they will fit into one tiny trade center I do not know but I also do not ask questions otherwise I may learn the horrible truths that life hides from us. A few more workers for luck, one for you and one for the tires. <laughs> Bashing the workers into the tires will never get old. I just love how calm they all are. They're afraid if they speak out they'll be used next. Don't worry little people, I only use fresh meat. Right, now the guards are guarding, the keepers keeping and you guessed it, the tires are tiring. We can add the animals to this soup to give the flavour we all crave, chaos. In an ideal world I would like to add the animals one at a time so that we can study which one thrives within the walls of our tire enclosure however for reasons beyond my control we will add them all at once and see what happens oh the people are on the move oh dear are they stuck maybe I should have uh, no wait 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 they're moving they just prefer moving as one big disturbing mass I think they're trying to give the illusion of speed well color me fooled you speedy bastards you okay they're regathering for the final 
final leg of the release of the 200 animals. This should be interesting to say the least. Oh, it's starting. I can feel the power of the animals entering the zoo, but also this red number is growing pretty fast. Predation is occurring. I don't know what that is, but it just has to be good as they're telling me about it. Ah, this reminds me a lot of when I was born into the world. The smell of tires and chaotic mumbling of people judging me. Good job, brushes. Return to your broom duties now. I'll assume that there are animals inside this thing now, but it's kind of hard to see them. On another note, we are getting guests now, which is good. I can see they're wiping the sweat from their brows, so the heaters are obviously working. If the rest of the system is also working, the adults should be entering in droves, whereas the families with children should be leaving while feeling crushing amounts of rejection due to the extortionate ticket prices. Ah, it's nice to see the security are just kind of in the way. Good work, guys. Some of the guests are just getting stuck behind you. I'll assume they're the naughty ones, and you're dividing them like a herd. Oh, wow. The children are actually entering? So we're making $100 per child and $3 per adult. By my calculations, that's over $103 earned so far. I love that they're just walking around getting soaked to the skin and not complaining. But I suppose if they're also fine with almost being crushed by tires continuously, they aren't really a picky group of people, are they? They're my kind of people, dead inside. Let's witness the miracle of the park together through the eyes of a complete stranger. Good, the cacti trees are doing their job. More than I can say about the security, but you know what? It's fine. Next, they get a complimentary showering from the waterfalls, followed by the famous tire volcano of southern Australia. If you look really hard and squint your eyes just enough, you can even see some of the animals just existing at the bottom of the cage, wishing they were dead. There's a flamingo, a dog, a weird looking dog, and a water dog. Also, there's a penguin just hogging the biggest empty space like a boss. Yes, this is truly a magical day out for everyone. I can't see how I could possibly improve on this situation any further, except I'm going to. We'll start with a path, a path for people. However, I don't want it to be too pathy, just enough path. There we go, perfect. Next, another enclosure. We'll just use glass again as it's see-through and seeing as one thing people with vision do. Perfect, wonderful, truly inspiring. Next, a gate for the workers to access the enclosure and a moat around the path to create a little island of sort. Next, some water to really drive home that island feeling. And we'll go ahead and make it red as it's actually not water but blood. Fantastic, authentic. Next, we'll pick up the visitors and put them on the island. Great, I'm happy with that number. After that, I'll make another little enclosure using an electric fence and cacti. I'll put people in the middle of it. If you can escape, you can go home. If you can't escape, well, this is your new home. Meanwhile, back on the island, I'm going to add some coolers and set them to minus 20 degrees. Nothing screams fun like losing your toes to frostbite. Now we need to buy another 200 animals because variety is key to life. We'll get a mixture. Now to rehome the animals into this laggy mess I call my park. Who knew a park this small could produce so much lag? Here come the workers with the new animals. This island is going to be the ultimate walk-in animal experience ever. Each animal has been carefully handpicked to work in perfect harmony with one another. Here goes nothing. This is going to be spectacular. I can vision it now. They're just going to burst from the boxes and fill the entire enclosure. Oh, are you ready? Here we go. Whoops. Oh, oh, okay. Or, or they'll just be glitched inside each other. Hmm, yeah, this is um, this is also a possibility, I suppose, as it's happened. But the question is, who will be the first to explore the cage? Go on, separate. Let's give them a little encouragement. Now go. Oh, nice. They're moving. Oh, they can swim. Oh, oh dear. It might not be deep enough. Hmm. I really hope they don't attack the people. Oh, oh good. They're just killing each other. The bears in particular seem to be jerks, which I kind of expected. The rest are more or less tolerating each other. I can see a lot of bodies though. Um, and that, that isn't really uh, tolerating, is it? I mean, the people seem happy enough, all things considering. It kind of looks like they're cheering. And if I go ahead and replace the sound, now they are cheering. There we go. It's nice now. And just look at how excited the children are. This experience will be the center of every therapy session they ever have. And you just can't wish for more than creating memories for children horrible nightmarish memories. I think it's time that we take everything we've learned from this
this small park and make something slightly bigger. Bro, good idea. So far it's pretty small compared to what I'd expect from you. Hmm, that's your first mistake, expecting things from me. But seriously, what is it you've learned from this park that you'd like to improve upon in your next park? Ah, uh, absolutely nothing. Oh, um, bravo then. Huh, thanks. Anyway, new park created and you just know it's going to be grand when it takes 30 minutes to load. Without further ado, I give you the biggest thing since something that is slightly smaller in comparison. Welcome to Never Ever Again land the only park that when you visit you'll never ever return to and it's not because you won't like it i mean you won't like it but that won't stop you from returning no it's more because you won't leave alive and i mean that in the nicest way because for once i'm not trying to kill you you're just likely to die from a cocktail of exhaustion thirst hunger and or old age i don't see why it's my responsibility to feed you and tell you when it's time to rest your legs you're a big kid now you know what's good for you let me show you around first you ride the train to the next stop it goes a whipping 30 miles per hour so the journey is fairly quick and we're there the reason i have the train in place is because it works as a one-way street once you've ridden the train there's no way of getting back the only way is the exit which we'll get to eventually after your ride you wade through the swamp valley which is made up of mostly mud and people mud to reach the cozy meadows which is a bit of a deceptive name because it just happens to be a cactus farm and please no noise while you make your way through the farm as it disturbs the cacti's rest cycle once you've made it through our farm if you've made it through our farm you'll have to get through the flower gardens it might not seem that bad but trust me if you have hay fever or a fear of bees you'll hate it more than the cozy meadows once you've made it through those nightmares you have to go through more mud poison ivy some vines and some spiky things yeah we got Got lazy towards the end and gave up naming the places an upside to the park and it's only a small one is getting lost is next to impossible we've been kind enough to signpost the most important facilities for you exit next left toilets also next left drinks also also next left and yes i made this sign pretty sweet huh now that might not seem too bad but it is you have quite a few right turns spiraling towards the center until you get to that left turn we all want to see i did originally try to make the path single lane and i'd got to probably around 12 paths looped around the whole thing which took around 20 hours as i had to combat a hefty amount of lag but sadly my game save corrupt and i lost everything so instead, I decided to make this optical illusion, and the only illusion that I've created is the illusion that I've tried. While we're on a subject, let's start a new subject. There's no refunds for entering the park. <laughs> That's right, you'll pay $3, and I personally think it's worth it. I'm sorry, okay? Not really. You get the picture. I've, I've made signs and everything. I could have just said it. Anyway, I have a special little surprise for someone's special little day. Hi, Billy. I hear it's your birthday, and you really like elephants. Well, Surprise! <laughs> Oh, oh god, I should stop really, but I've started already. Ah, it's too late to go back. Oh god, ah, mm, this wasn't what I had planned as a surprise. I guess I should have really gave them food and water. I mean, they were in there for 20 years. Oh, good. As always, some boxes have turned up to hide my shame in them. I just hope my parents don't find them under my bed again. Anyway, moving on from that sin. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So I forgot to mention, I've also installed speakers that literally just play the sound of crickets and heaters set all the way up to 50 degrees to make your walk that little more comfortable so basically you'll listen to crickets in bacon heat while you loop around my forever park it's like a metaphor for life really the metaphor being that life is mm, something yep yeah life is something when you do eventually make it to the end if you do you'll be greeted by the information desk if you can reach it that is rumor has it that the last people to try are still fallen to this day Next you'll have a small tunnel to walk through which leads inside the facilities area. The facilities include toilets, um sorry though they are currently out of order after I tried to flush the elephants down them but there is a gulpy if you like to drink things however mm, 
How do I break this to you? I've had to close it due to staff shortages after I tried to also flush them down the toilet. So basically what I'm saying is that there is nothing to look forward to. I guess that is the metaphor I was looking for. Life is one long walk with nothing to look forward to. Okay, okay, I'm being a bit pessimistic here. I guess the buildings are nice to look at if you're into that sort of thing. Doesn't really do anything for me. I prefer endless amounts of disappointment. Anyway, something that is interesting to look at for real this time is this tire volcano. Oh yes, I've built a freaking tire volcano. I could have used coloured balls to represent the lava and give it that lava ball look, but I prefer tires. They're bouncier and a bit more menacing. I mean, if I saw lava, I'd just be like, oh look, a volcano spewing lava. How original. And I'd probably continue whatever I was doing. But if I saw tires flying out of a mountain, I'd be like, holy crap, there's a volcano spewing tires. And I'd probably wonder why tires are so expensive to replace. I mean, historically speaking, I think if the volcano in Pompeii had shot tires out of it instead of lava, the people may have been a bit more bothered by it all and tried to flee instead of just trying to sleep through it all. But whatever, I'm no historian. I'm getting sidetracked. Inside the volcano is the main attraction. The one animal I managed to keep alive. An animal worshipped by a horde of penguins and scarecrow alike. An animal that demands offerings to be given daily in order to appease him and keep the tires flowing from the mountain. The animal in the back of your mind when you're sleeping. It's the long necked deer goat. Look into his star lined eye and know only fear. Stare at his little pretty pink bow and you shall know the meaning of impending doom. This animal can only exist in one place and that is here. The very walls of this cave harbour the ability for him to <clears throat> Uh, do you know what? Actually, I'm really bored of this now. Instead, I'm going to just watch the people walk around and see how long it takes them to make it. It shouldn't be too much time. Oh, well... That was, um, that was balls. I mean, I know I could have left my computer running, but I had to watch to make sure they actually walked because sometimes they would stop moving and be like, oh, we're trapped in the park. And then I'd have to do a bunch of crap to get them to start walking again. And it was just a lot of hassle. So I just stared at the screen and pondered all of life's mysteries instead. I came up with some pretty solid ideas and answers, but I forgot them now. Um, let's go ahead and check out what people have thought of the park so far. Nice. It's good to see that I'm not the only person in the world who has a single thought every few months or so. Let's see what you've been thinking then. Someone needs to build some benches. Oh, that's actually a really good idea, but I don't know who could do that. I don't like how this area looks. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't think the area likes how you look either. I wish I could get to a toilet. That's why you're wearing pants, my dear. And lastly, I wish I was somewhere else. Finally, something I can address for you. How do you like the scenery now <laughs> yeah that's right you're all the way back at the beginning enjoy the walk again i mean considering all the frowny faces when i look at them they all seem quite happy just goes to show you what two-faced people look like they look like any one of us dun, dun, dun. So none of his needs have been met. Who really cares? And look, he's been having more thoughts. Great, well done. I'm happy for you. I mean, looking at his environment stuff, I think we've done pretty well, actually. Point one, the zoo is clean and tidy. Hmm, that's a given as I haven't supplied any places to eat or drink. There's not much vandalism. Well, I don't have anything that can be vandalized, really, do I? The staff facilities are well hidden. Well, that's because I don't have any. The animals are well looked after. Did you see the elephants did they look at me okay whatever you're the customer you're always right i've spent too much time walking hold on how much time have you spent walking arrival date year 26 and we're in the year 85 now i think all things considering you've been lucky to have only been walking 59 years which translates to 17 real life hours at times five speed the game at times five speed not my life my life is going at a steady minus five speed anyway Enough about you, Stanley. Me, 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 me. Can we talk about the old lady doing push-ups behind you in the background? What are you trying to achieve? Oh, there's another of you. Only this person has broken their leg. And, oh, her 
their face. They just gave up at life. <laughs> what a hero. I inspire to be only half the person you are one day. Oh wait, there's another, an even bigger hero. What are you pointing at though? Is it this man pooping? Why are you pooping on my path, sir? This one's just crawling back to the entrance. This one's playing Twister alone. Oh, this person's seen something they don't like and have just frozen in time. Got a glimpse of your future, huh? Just another 12 laps to go and you're home free. This one's praying to the long next deer goat that they'll be saved from this hell. These ones just look like an indie folk band's album cover. The oh shush kebab, I've got a long way to go still. Catching some rays, are ya? Giving up at life again, huh? No way, this is how you give up at life. Wow, I found my soulmate. I know what you're thinking by now. Kyle, why are all these people just dying on your paths and or jumping into the sky? Well, allow me to show you. First, you click a person and you rename them to this. By renaming them, they then do this. Oh yes, they literally jump into the air and slam back into the ground. It's like popping corn kernels only with people. I imagine this happens in hot countries where the paths get too warm. The fun thing to do is just pause it when they're in the air and explore the endless stories of people bringing their family into the rapture. All things considering, I think people seem pretty okay with me doing this. However, I have noticed that the number of park visitors has dropped quite dramatically and the roads are a lot clearer than they were. Hmm, so where could the guests have gone? Unless they've actually been raptured. I imagine they're here. I'm not sure if this counts as them being in the zoo still, because they've kind of just congealed into one big gloop of humanity. Let's see what happens if we unpause the game and let them just get on with whatever it is they're trying to do. Oh, oh, this is, um, this is unsettling. As a British person, this really triggers anxiety in me. Why aren't you queuing? Come on, this isn't Germany, where people just use their elbows to get to the front. This looks way too much like those masked parties that my parents used to have at my house. Yeah, just like them. I do, however, like that the security are now just posing for pictures with the chaos they allowed to happen. It's like, hey, check it out. I haven't done my job properly and now people are dying. Hashtag no filter. Hashtag LOL. Hashtag inappropriate time to fart. It is good to see though that amongst all the chaos, this woman here is apparently having a much worse day than any of the others. Then this guy is just trying to control the situation. He's like, don't worry, I'll catch you. No, don't look at me like that. Yes, I mean all of you. Don't look so worried. And the people that are inside regret their decision to come to the zoo all together. But this kid's like, hurry up daddy or we'll miss out on the main event. The main event of course being this. Yeah, you see, the thing is, if you go through life not having any goals or aims, then anything you do is a huge success because you've done it. And that is my motto for life until either the day that I die or next Tuesday, whatever comes first. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching my midlife crisis unfold in the form of tormenting zoo visitors and animals alike as much as I've enjoyed letting it happen. Let me know if you'd like to see more of Planet Zoo in the comments and be sure to tell your friends what you saw today because no one's going to believe you. Honestly. For now, I'll continue to bring families together by exploding them on top of each other. Until next time, toodaloo!